Hey guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan, and in this video, I just wanted to supplement a really simple article that I wrote over on LinkedIn, which talks about how you can calculate the size of an S3 bucket using the AWS tools for PowerShell, or the AWS PowerShell module, which is basically the software development kit, or SDK, for PowerShell. Now, to simplify the process of installing the AWS tools for PowerShell, I created this project over on github and basically what it does is it just executes a github actions workflow i think it's once daily uh, if i check out my yaml config here yeah it runs it at 6 a.m daily U utc so that would be um you know almost to midnight depending on which u.s time zone you're in but uh basically there is a container package here so if you click on packages right over here we can uh, grab the latest version of this and you can actually grab historical versions here as well So if you ever wanted to do automated testing against a specific version of the AWS tools for PowerShell You can do that just by using the appropriate version tag uh, But I'm just going to go ahead and grab the latest one here And the reason that I want to calculate the size of my s3 bucket is actually because I am uploading as you can see on the left hand side here I'm uploading a bunch of data into an S3 compatible bucket on a different storage provider known as FileBase. And so FileBase allows you to uh, basically store data on blockchain backed storage networks like Storage and SIA networks. And uh, basically they are compatible with the S3 APIs because the front end API servers that they use to serve up the storage on those blockchain storage networks is basically designed to be compatible with any of the S3 SDK. So you can use the AWS CLI if you want to, you can use the PowerShell module for AWS. Uh, if you're a Python developer, you can use the Bodo3 module for AWS and things like that. But anyways, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, run up a new container here and kind of show you how you can um, you know, use this script to get your bucket size. Now, as you can see right over here in my dashboard in FileBase right here, I've got a bunch of different buckets. I've got a bunch of S3 objects, currently at 87.6 gigs, but I've actually got 2.2 terabytes total that I'm uploading. I think that's the total. That actually might just be the portion that's not been uploaded. So it might be you know 2.3 terabytes or something right around there. Um, but I'm on a slow Starlink connection and <laughs> So uh, it's the upload speed leaves something to be desired. And so I'm just kind of trying to keep track of you know, my progress here because it's taking many days to upload this. In any case, over here in FileBase, you can create a bucket under the buckets section right here. And then under the access keys section right here, which I'm not going to show you just because that will reveal my uh, root access keys, is uh, where you can get your credentials. So you can get your access key ID and your secret access key, very similar to what you would configure in uh, if you're using AWS itself as an IAM user. So once you've got those credentials, you can just spin up a new container from this image here. So if you do uh, docker run dash dash interactive dash dash ETY, and then I'll do a dash dash RM just to automate cleaning up that container after it exits. And then what I'll do in here is I, basically I've already got the AWS PowerShell module pre-installed. That's the whole point of this custom container that I built. So if I do uh, get module dash list available, get module dash list available, you'll see that we get back a list of all the different AWS modules right here. And of course, one of those is the aws.tools.s3 module right here. And so what we can do is just explore that module and see what capabilities it has. But before we do that, you'll first want to set up your credentials. You just want to do set AWS credential. You can do store as to uh, configure like a profile name, like FileBase. I've already got one named FileBase, so I'm not going to overwrite that. And then you can use the access key parameter to plug in your access key and your secret access key parameter to plug in your secret access key. And then once that's been configured, one of the other things you want to do is to set your default AWS region to US East 1 because uh, FileBase basically requires that you use the US East 1 region in order to interact with their APIs. And then uh, I'm not sure if this command up here will actually set your default profile. So once you've stored that profile, you might just want to do set AWS credential dash profile name FileBase, and then that will set your current um, profile. 
So I'm actually going to spin up a container like this, but I am just going to mount in the credentials from my local file system because I already have a credentials file set up. So I'm going to do the dash dash mount parameter here and we'll say source equals, actually I'm going to put this in double quotes so I get variable interpolation. Then I'll do source equals home dot AWS and destination equals root dot AWS. So basically it'll mount it inside the container under that path. And then I'll do type equals bind mount. And that should allow me to map in my credentials. So now I should be able to do set AWS credential dash profile name and do file base. All right, so now I've got my credentials set up and then we'll also wanna do set default AWS region, US East one. And now we can go ahead and start playing around with the S3 APIs. So if we do get command dash module aws.tools.s3, there's a whole bunch of different commands in here. One of those commands is called get s3 object here. And that'll allow us to explore all of the objects inside of our bucket in Filebase. So if I do get s3 bucket dash bucket name, and the name of my bucket is just Trevor Sullivan. And so that's going to spit back a huge list of um, objects. But of course, I'm getting this error here because I actually need to set the endpoint URL. Um, this is one of the things I always forget to do is we need to set our endpoint to filebase.com. So the reason we're getting this exception, of course, is because by default, the endpoint that this command is going to talk to is the Amazon S3 endpoint. And because in this case, we're using a third party S3 compatible provider, so it's not S3 itself, but it's an S3 compatible provider, we need to make sure that we specify that custom endpoint URL. And that should work. Okay, I need to actually do get S3 object. And once we do that, you'll see a whole list of objects right here. And each of these S3 objects has a size property, and that's just an integer indicating the number of bytes for each of those files. So these Premiere uh, project files right here are relatively small. They're only about, you know, 100 kilobytes, maybe 1 to 200 kilobytes in size. But a bunch of these MP4 files that contain the raw recordings that I work on for CBT Nuggets, those are quite a bit bigger, you know, about 1 gigabyte here. And I've got ones that range from 2 to 3 gigs, like this one right here. So what I want to do is basically total up this size property for all of these objects. So if I do get S3 object and then pipe that into a command called measure object. That's a built-in command in PowerShell that allows us to measure things. And what I'm going to do is say, I want the sum of the property size. And if I run that, it's basically going to take all of those S3 object objects, PowerShell objects rather, that represent S3 objects. And then it's going to grab the size property and it's going to sum it together, giving us this value right here. And what we can do now is grab just the sum property. So it's totaling up all the objects. So there's 172 objects in the bucket. And out of all those 172 objects, it totals up to this number of bytes right here. And so what we want to do is basically grab that sum property. So I'll, I'll assign this to uh, measurement, just a variable. You can name that variable whatever you want to. And then we'll do measurement.sum to grab the sum value here. And then this is kind of hard to read by default because you know, you'd have to figure out how many bytes or how many gigabytes is this number of bytes makes up. And so PowerShell has a built-in helper called the GB or MB, or you can even do TB. And uh, basically, if you divide by one GB for one gigabyte, that'll tell you the number of gigabytes as a decimal number. And if you wanted to, you could just round that up and just say, I want to extract that or cast it to an integer value. And so we can do that by specifying integer in these square brackets here. And so basically it's just going to round up and say, okay, 87.57 is basically 88 gigs of data. So that's just a quick way for me to very easily see exactly how large my different file-based buckets are. And of course you could apply this to any Amazon S3 compatible provider, including Amazon S3 itself. But in any case, I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll talk to you again.